So let's continue with this tutorial. So in the previous videos, we generated the mesh. So at this point, doesn't matter what kind of mesh do you have. In my case, I'm working with a polyhedra. So just to show you how to set up a simulation using Innova and the open from GUI. So assuming that you have everything, the, your next step will be, we were here in meshing, will be just clicking here, set up the open from case. So here you have all the different options. So exactly what you have when you set up a case using the input file, the text files, you have it here in an easy to use graphical user interface, interface or GUI. So you can start to bring every of these single options. So you click in each icon or you just click here in the last icon and that will bring, bring here into this tab all the different options. So what I want to do is that in this last one, the dictionary, you will have also the option to save everything. So just to point out here that this is the directory where I work. And so I have my case files, my geometries and so on, and the ANOVA case files. So if I want to save the, the, the case, I recommend you to do it from here. Okay. So basically what you need to do is just export dictionary files. So up to this point, we haven't done anything. Okay. We have, we haven't clicked in any of these icons. Okay. But we have already the full option. So as you click here and let me call it case one, look at it. You have here the option you now to save it in Asker binary and you can directly scale it here if you want. So if you click there, it's going to save the files and you come here, you are going to find the directory structure. Okay. So you have everything set up here, all the files that we're using in this case and so on. So it's up to you to choose. You can copy this, but at this point you can move this file to your computer, run uh, the simulation. Okay. Use the uh, Windows existing Linux, your virtual machine, whatever, or you can stick and use the graphical user interface, which is what, what I'm going to, to show you. So at this point, we know that we can explore everything. So now let's follow the steps. So as you go in DT here, you set the basic physics. So let's say that in this case, I want to use a compressible because I want to enable temperature. You can choose your different solvers. So let's go for raw simple phone. So you can take a look here and see what are all the options that you have available. I want to disable this one. You have here your parallelization level. You can choose your runtime. So let's run for 500, save the solution every 50. So pretty much the same solution, same actions that you have in the, in the input file, in the text file. And this is a very important step models. And here you need to give the path. Where do you have Linux? Uh, where do you have, sorry, open phone? And in this case, if you're working in windows, using windows existing Linux, where do you have that install. So in this case, I'm using V, uh, the version ESI 2212, and this is where we have it in installed in our default Windows existing Linux installation. So later in the next video, that will be a bonus video. I would show you how to install Windows existing Linux and this is specific as that, but what is important that you need to have your default uh, Linux installation, Windows existing Linux. If you're working in Windows, you're working in Linux, it's straightforward. Just give the path, but the default uh, installation needs to be Ubuntu and you need to give the location where you have it. And then, you know, it's going to, to, to find everything. So that is the critical step. Then you go into divergence and here you just set up your, your numeric as you are used to. So here you already have a very good robust uh, set up, I recommend to stay with that, but if you want to change it, it's up to you. Then you go also this one is SV solution. You can change all the options and you keep going. You have here materials, you set out the materials. So by default, we're using error. So let's, let's stay with error, but you can also change models, polynomial. You can add a species since can get a little bit more complex as you know, then you go here and you have here initialization. Okay. In constant director, whatever you have in the constant directory. So you define your material that we already have in the previous one, your turbulence model. Okay. You can have your initial conditions. 
and so on. And you have more options that will be enabled according to the physics that you, you keep having. So after having this one, you move to BC, these are boundary conditions, and every single patch that you create created here when you were generating the mesh, manipulating your geometry, you access that information here. So already set up something, okay, a pri uh, priori. So if you go here in, in one, whatever is this one, I think it will be that one or the other, it doesn't matter. You can choose here what you want and the values, okay, velocity and so on. Uh, something important that you know that OpenFone have a lot of boundary conditions. We're not exposing all of boundary conditions here, just the most important ones, but still you have access to the, to the text file. So it's something that you have there in the GUI, you can just come here to the text file and implement it, or you can also uh, modify you know, your libraries that you have with Zenova. It's, those are XML, file, uh, XML files, and you can add or remove something from there. That is a little bit more advanced. I'm not going to address that just in the basic level. So that is boundary condition. So feel free to, to, to use as you like. Then you have more options. You add a school stick. You can also add expression here, which is very powerful. And we keep moving here in the different dictionaries. So as you have Lagrangian particles, you access that there. In this case, we don't have. We go to SV options. And here you can enable some of the most important no, uh, function objects. So you know, also you have many of them. So I always like to set up fill, fill min max. You enable that here. Let me click there in T temperature. Then you have more function objects. So it's up to you to enable everything. OPT is uh it's B auctions okay it's all source it's sourcer do not confuse that with optimization so you can enable the save it option so this is a uh, one that i always recommend to add this constraint in temperature so in this case uh, i have 300 in one inlet 400 in uh, the other inlet so i know that the values should be constrained within those values and by the way let me go back because i forgot to to set up that so if i go in one, 300 Kelvins, and as I said, into, should be here, 400 Kelvins. Okay, that is fine, and the outlet, it will be just a natural boundary, boundary condition. So let me put here, inlet, outlet. So this is it, we are set up here, I forgot that, sorry about that. So you can always go back, there is no problem. At this point, uh, we have post, this is post-processing, some stuff that, you want to save while running, okay? So you have many options there. So feel free, for instance, you can save like white plus, Q criterion, cut plans, and so on. This one here is related to adjoint optimization and very interesting tab. I'm not going to address that there. So let's, okay. Uh, sometimes you click in some of those icons and it will froze for a little bit, but it's not a problem. Uh, and now at this point, let's say that we didn't forget anything we, we should be ready to go as usual, always safe now and then. So I will call it ROM1. And let's also export the new dictionary. Okay, so this one will be ROM1. And there you go, you set up your case. We have our installation, we have everything, all the Windows existing Linux, and we're ready to run. At this point, in platforms, choose WSL, and if you click Run, Enova will go and launch everything. So, what is interesting now, as I mentioned, I will, I will create a bonus video just to show you how to install Windows existing Linux, but it's very straightforward. It is extremely easy. So here I have a few of my installations and I have everything there. In this case, just to show you here, I have Ubuntu. This is the one where we have installed uh, with Windows existing Linux. And we are pointing, remember that it is OPT where it was pointing open from. So here you have the installation and you need to point to that installation. I told it wasn't that one. It is pointing to user lit. But it's basic uh, uh, a Linux installation. You can access everything there. So in this case, it's running. We can uh, plot the residuals in the fly. So you ask, access this file here. You click there, and there you go. Here you can visualize your residuals. Okay, you have the windows. Manually, you can change it. And as you 
change a little bit. Now you change to logarithmic previous was linear. And this is it. So if you want to update that, just click here. And there you have it updated. So everything is being safe. You can post process while running. You need to, to, you need to end for the to wait for the end of the simulation. You have everything here. We define the, the simulation with four cores and so on. So you have all your files there. And the post-processing, you can do it using the built-in uh, post-processing tool that comes with Nova, which is based in part of you, or you can launch part of you on your own. There is no problem. So let me show you there. So you all know that you just need to open this dot file, dot .phone file and that's so so i think this simulation should be already done okay it's almost there it is running and let's wait a little bit okay let me update it here okay 250 and let's wait a little bit so here we have part of you let me bring this window here just to show you that now i can open that file there and you have your normal case honestly i recommend just to to to, to use part of you to do the pulse processing but uh the advantage of using the built-in tool that comes with you know, is that it tends to be m much faster than PowerView. you know recall that PowerView is loading everything the internal fields and so on instead it's you use the one that comes with you know, it's just loading the basic fields it's not loading everything and then you need internal fields and so on will will load that in memory so it tends to be faster but if you want to access all the capabilities of Paraview, it's better to, to, to launch the standalone version. So let me load there. And there you go. So we have our time directories. Uh, let me click here. Okay, this is velocity. You have your velocity field. Here you have your T field, temperature, and that's it. So you can access that or Let's wait until reach convergence. So it should be 500 for some reason. It's a little bit slow. So let me open there. So recall that always post-processing. You're going to have those residuals there. You click pause and there you go. Okay, so we're almost done. So let's wait a little bit uh, and then we do the final part that is the post-processing. Okay, at this point I think we we reach convergence. Yep, so the simulation is done and we can move to the post-processing stage. So post-processing, you need to open that file like for part of you, post. And there you go. We are now, this, this is, uh, recall that this is a, a lighter version of PowerView. You didn't have access to all the functionalities, the most important ones. But the idea how it works is pretty much similar here. You have the time controls. Here you can choose what you want to plot. So in this case, I would like to plot a slice there. So let me put one there. Let me add a second one. And I want that one here. And let me put a little bit higher. Apply. I come here, back there, and I want to hide all the fields. So as I, as I mentioned that all the, inter the internal fields there are not low by default. So this is why this tends to be a little bit faster. But yeah, you don't have access to all the capabilities, but you, you, you can use the most important ones. So for instance, if this one here, let me go in this, you want to change the it's color by T and now I want to color by velocity magnitude. You put it there, you have the scales, you can click here, edit, and you can share your, change the scales. They select the automatic rescaling, give different scales there. And well, just feel free to play around. And here you have the time controls. So you can go back and let me click here and let's see what we have. So we have the evolution there and this is it. So 
we have done here, we have seen the whole workflow how to do the simulation using Innova. So first we open the geometry, manipulate it a little bit, we create the dimension. Now we set up the case in OpenFund. We run the simulation and we post-process it. So with this, I think we are done with this case. And I hope now that you are mastering Innova and you can see the potentialities for Innova to set up to speed up your workflows in OpenFund. Besides the mesh that that is we cannot deny it that it's much better measures. Now also you have this capability to accelerate your workflow and be more productive when you are using uh, OpenFund. So I think this is the end of this video. Just to remind you that we're going to do a, an additional, a bonus video just to show you how to install the Windows existing Linux and some of the of the uh, standard practices and the steps that you should follow to, to, to get Enova running in Windows for those Windows users. So thanks for your attention and see you next time. Bye.